G'day there guys, I don't think I've ever left this room in my life. It's your main man Marky and welcome back to another episode of r slash am I the a-hole. Dear god, my forehead is shiny in this light, um, sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie and get ready for some good content. Thank you. Posted by user om666n, titled, Am I the a-hole for getting upset over chocolates? I'm in my first trimester, so I'm craving desserts a lot. My husband got me some holiday edition chocolates as a part of my Christmas gift, and I was saving them for a day when I had intense cravings. I ate two on Christmas from a pack of 35 and kept the rest in our snack drawer. I woke up the next day hangry for some chocolates and got excited to start eating the ones I got. Then my husband sheepishly tells me that he ate most of them and there's maybe three left. So he ate 30 of my Christmas chocolates and I had five. I got mad and sulked at him and told him to replace the chocolates. When he went to the store today, he said that he tried to look for them but they weren't selling the holiday ones anymore. He just got me the regular pack. I then got really upset and kind of blew up at him and then gave him the cold shoulder for most of the morning. He says it's just chocolates and he tried to make up for it anyways and it's not his fault they didn't have the ones that I wanted in stock. I feel like I'm the a-hole because of the way I reacted. I really let him have it because I was so frustrated. I didn't yell at him, but I was being really passive-aggressive, like, are you sure you're not just going to eat the chocolates you buy for me again? And I ended up ignoring him and refusing to eat the new chocolates that he bought me because they weren't the limited edition ones with different flavors. So Reddit, am I the a-hole for getting extremely upset, blowing up at him, and still being upset 12 hours later? Or should I accept his justifications and get over it, since after all, it's just chocolate. This does strike me as something that's small and inconspicuous in the grand scheme of things, but as people always say, it's the little things that count. And he chose to eat 30 of those little things and not tell you. Combined with pregnancy hormones and your cravings, you are definitely not going to react in a way that someone without all that going on would. I don't think that reaction was over the top either. It's somewhat expected that you would be silly about something like, damn, can I really trust you? You sure you're not gonna eat the next packet too? You bloody meanie? So yeah, I'd say that you're justified and he definitely did the wrong thing here. He needs to make up for his mistake, not the a-hole. Now in the comments, catmic 14 says, not the a-hole. Your husband ate 30 of the 35 chocolates that he specifically got for you, his pregnant hormonal chocolate craving wife, and he thought that was fine? It's not his fault that they didn't have the holiday ones anymore, but it is his effing fault that he ate your chocolate. He's absolutely the a-hole here. And it was part of her Christmas present. It wasn't even like he just picked up some extra chocolates while grocery shopping with her in mind. It was literally his gift. He ate like 95% of her gift. It was a gift for him. How could he not control himself? Like why even eat one? Especially without asking and seeing that there's only two missing. Not the a-hole. Your husband didn't even take responsibility for his childish inability to control his impulse to eat your Christmas present. You're not mad at the store for being out of a seasonal item, you're mad at your husband for eating your chocolates, and rightfully so. How does pregnant hormonal OP with crazy pregnant woman cravings have better self-control than her husband? Ridiculous. It's actually quite easy sometimes. It's even easier if it's not your first baby. I'm two days away from having my third, and I have more self-control than my husband. I generally have more self-control when it's something I really, really want and crave, and it's not an everyday staple. It's definitely an internal battle of, I really want to eat all the chocolates now, but I also know I'm going to really want some chocolate tomorrow. And not the a-hole. You don't steal a gift you've given someone, and you certainly don't steal food from a pregnant woman. He's the a-hole. And now on to the update. So I wasn't expecting the post to blow up and I couldn't reply to everyone. Thank you for your opinions, even the ones calling me an a-hole. 
I wanted to update with the end of this whole thing. Husband realized most of my reaction was pregnancy hormones, and the anger was not unjustified. I told him why I was upset about the chocolates, and that I was even more upset I had to keep emphasizing to ask before eating my food. He understood and said he didn't mean to hurt my feelings. I genuinely believe he wasn't being malicious, and he had already ordered two packs of the holiday chocolates online. They're not chocolate bars, by the way. They were mercy chocolates, so it would have been easier for him to eat 30 in a night. Because I know how he is, it's best for me to just put a sticky note on my snacks moving forward. He's promised to always ask now he's seen exactly how upset I can get over just some chocolates, but just in case, I'll do this. Not the best, since he shouldn't be taking them without permission anyways, but it'll help avoid some pain. There were a lot of comments concerned about my husband's eating habits. I totally understand and am tracking the situation. Trigger warning for eating disorders. I used to have bulimia. This pregnancy has triggered a lot of that, which is also why it's harder for me to get a grip of my emotions. My husband is in the army and has been upset at himself for the past year about his weight gain and how he's losing his physical strength compared to when he enlisted. I've been supporting him, but he does get hard on himself when it gets to junk food. He has a massive sweet tooth. He sees a nutritionist and dietitian on base who is tracking his food intake and exercises. I do monitor what he does, because he does do some worrying things like count calories. When I say highly restrictive, I mean he usually eats meat, veg, small carbs, and doesn't allow himself treats other than fruits. Next, no we're not getting a divorce. Sorry Reddit. We were both a-holes in our own right, but we talked it out. I know I have issues with my anger outside of being pregnant too, but I'm seeing someone to get a better grip on things. And lastly, I don't appreciate when someone tells me I will not be a good mother or tries to tell me how to parent. I got caught up in my emotions, yes, but that does not mean I'll be a bad mother. After posting that, I had an appointment and was told that I had a high chance of miscarrying again. So seeing those comments and some of the horrible messages I've gotten have hurt. Sure, stuff on Reddit is anonymous, but if you have nothing nice to say, just don't say it. That's really all. My husband isn't some selfish gaslighting monster. He just made a stupid mistake and I reacted. He's making up for it and I'm past holding it against him. He's a good guy when he's not stealing chocolates. Edit to add, to everyone who offered to buy me chocolates, thank you, but keep your money and get some chocolates for yourselves to celebrate surviving 2020. Much appreciated though. And in the comments, Dark Scottish Locke says, What the hell? People said you would be a bad mother because of this? Sounds to me like your mama bear instincts kicked right in. Baby wants chocolate, baby gets chocolate. Good luck to you and your growing family, and happy holidays. Right? I'm six months pregnant and bawled my eyes out over cookies today, like cried for 20 minutes. Guess I'm going to be in the same terrible mother boat. I'll bring cookies to share and we can just be horrible mothers together. I'm not pregnant, and I cried for 10 minutes today because my cat wouldn't come when I called him. He does come when called. Goodness. People were actually calling for you to divorce your husband over that? He definitely shouldn't have eaten the chocolates, but boy, I'd like to see the judge's face with that listed as the reason for a divorce. And OP replied, Many people assumed this was part of a larger problem of disrespect and gaslighting, therefore divorce. It really wasn't. He just made a mistake and then reacted to my anger with more anger. It's a pretty human reaction to be honest. We all have moments like that. I think people forgot how tempting chocolate really is. I'm glad you guys talked it out. Emotions run high, especially now, and sometimes little things can become big things, that's what she said. Good luck to you both with the impending little one. And Saint Alvis says he shouldn't be taking them without permission anyways. No, he shouldn't. I'm full shake my head at all these steps that you're taking to get him to comply with this most minimal of requests. 
He understood and said he didn't mean to hurt my feelings, and I genuinely believe he wasn't being malicious. Honestly, malicious might be easier for you to deal with than this kind of adrift cluelessness. And OP replies, I know, and it's really something he should already be doing. Trust me, I've given him a lot of crap about that. The sticky note is for my own peace of mind, so now I can be 100% sure he won't snack on my snacks again, and I can sleep tight knowing my chocolates are safe. Honestly, my husband is never malicious, but he probably would have eaten all of my chocolates too if I didn't hide them. He has a massive sweet tooth, a hard time controlling his intake, and is usually not possessive over food in general. That being said, this type of situation has come up for us in the past, and I got so upset I cried. After that, he stopped eating my stuff when he realized that it upset me. I have three brothers, and they would take my things without asking while growing up, so I tend to be protective about my things. Husbands did not realize this. To be on the safe side, I keep my things in less obvious locations. Not the a-hole. And our next post is by user, Set of Fills, titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my husband my children come first? So I have two girls with my ex who is 36 male. They are wonderful girls and my entire world. However, they live with my ex full time while I get every other weekend and some holidays. Now, my ex was just offered a job and it's a really good job and I'm happy for him. However, it's in another state, and I'm pretty sure he's going to take it because it's his home state where all his family is. It's also my home state, as that's where we met and my family all lives there too. So knowing that this is something my ex is going to do, I decided to discuss it with my husband and some options. I told them that if my ex does go back there, I would like to too, to be with my children and my family. Of course, I can't expect him to immediately lift his life and move with me, but I was trying to figure out if there was a way that we can do this. At first, he was treating it lightly and was like, yeah, I'm sure you'll be able to visit them or see them at Christmas. But when he realized I was being serious, he grew upset. He told me that he didn't want to move anywhere and that I shouldn't either, that our lives were here. And I agree. However, my children are also my life and I know for a fact that I wouldn't be able to see them consistently anymore, because they would live so far away, so it would be more rare that I see them. Anyways, he called me selfish for not thinking with him, and I told him if I was selfish, I wouldn't have brought it up and made my mind, and then I told him that my children came first in my life. And now he's refusing to talk to me, and claimed I was being self-centered and inconsiderate. So now I'm asking Reddit, Am I the a-hole for telling my husband that my children come first, and considering following them back to my home state? Edit. Some people have been asking for this information, so here it is. I would like to explain that there is a reason I have visitation rights, and that's because I've had a history of being an absent parent and not prioritizing my children in my life. I know that the court will side with my ex, and I am close to my children and I love them wholeheartedly. And I do think that this move, if it does end up happening, but most likely it will, would be beneficial for them as it's closer to both our extended families. Edit number two, I have gotten a lot of advice and a lot of judgment. I do want to say that I'm going to do some couples therapy for me and my husband. I think that's the best way to do things. Edit three, I'm adding this because I've been getting a lot of these comments and they're really affecting me. I forgot how hurtful the internet can be. First of all, I was an absentee parent. I was absent for the younger years. They are currently 10 and 8 years old. I have spent years building back the trust and love of being a mother. I'm on schedule to have 50-50 custody. Because of this, my children are my priority and I would do anything for them. Edit number 4, last edit because I forgot to mention this, I'm not trying to give my husband an ultimatum. This is not a yes or no situation. I love my husband and I'm going to discuss every option with him. And I'm also going to go over my custody order to see if anything can be changed. Thank you everyone for your comments. 
It really made me think a lot, and I appreciate it. Edit number five. I can't respond to comments anymore, so I'll answer your questions here. My ex is okay with me having fifty-fifty custody. We've talked about it, and we've discussed it. When it comes down to it, he won't fight. We have both decided that this is what is best for the girls. Now, because he's considering moving, this might change the way things are. And I believe the best way for me to go is to follow my children. However, there is obviously a lot to think about, so we'll see how everything turns out. If it's wanted, I could post an update later. I'm split between no a holes here and everyone sucks here for this one. That's quite egregious that she was an absentee parent for coming close to a decade. I can't imagine what those children are feeling and what the damage of having a parent abandon them like that would be. I don't think there's a world where OP wouldn't be an a-hole with that context in mind, even in the separate context of this story, just in a vacuum. Like they are not separate events. She abandoned her children, and that pain still lingers. Now she's stuck telling her current husband that she has to move back to her home state to atone for the sins of her past and present. I feel bad for the husband because once you're married and settled into a place. You don't exactly just uproot your life like that, but then again, he married this woman knowing that she only had partial custody because of that parental abandonment. He's enabling the children to continue to be abandoned by this woman if he pressures her to stay where they are now, and I think that's an a-hole move. And also, I don't think either OP nor their partner pushing their choice wouldn't be an ultimatum either. How is this not an ultimatum in this situation? That's just a really tough choice to make on either end. Honestly, the morally appropriate thing to do in this situation is just to move like you want to, OP. That's going to cause a lot of damage, though. So I'm just gonna have to vote everyone sucks here. Now in the comments, DCA user says, "No a holes here. I'd suggest couples counseling for you and your husband. In the meantime." Let your ex and your kids move up to a new state while you figure out your stuff here. It will take time for you and your husband to find new jobs in the new state if that's what you both decide to do. I would also talk to your divorce lawyer about custody, and if you really are close to getting fifty-fifty custody from a judge, if you were an absent parent for most of their life, I hope your lawyer has given you a game plan to change that. I don't want you to pin your hopes on something and then not have it happen. Also, talk to your divorce lawyer about divorced parents who live in different states, and the kids only see one parent for the holidays. And also, post the question on a subreddit for divorced parents. And OP replies, "Thank you for the suggestions. I will definitely look into couples counseling. I think it would be needed in this situation. And yes, I have a set plan for custody agreement that I am currently working on achieving." I wasn't absent for most of their lives, but enough to regret every single decision I made, in my opinion. More info: How badly will the finances impact you, and do you guys have jobs that will allow you to work remote? And OP replies: So I work in home care, and I know I can easily get transferred to a department in my home state, as that's where I used to work. However, my husband works remotely right now because of the pandemic, but it's temporary. I know that if we somehow do end up moving together, he would have to find a new job. If I'm in your husband's shoes, I just don't see how I don't feel resentful having to diminish and change my career to the whims of my wife's ex-husband. It's a crappy situation. I see his point, but I agree that you're right. And Soda Four 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 says, "Everyone sucks here. You're a parent, so it's your job to put your children first." But you also need to be considerate of your spouse. Your spouse should expect you to put your kids first. Knowing your family is somewhere else and discussing the potential of you returning there seems like something he should have done when you were dating. But I have to assume there's a lot more to this than what you can plausibly type here. Regardless, you are here asking if you're an a-hole or not, and that, at the very least, means communication failure. If you can communicate together well enough to get married, then you can communicate together well enough to get through this. And OP replies, "Thank you for this. It actually made me think we can hopefully find a middle ground. I don't see what middle ground you can reach, though. Either you leave your kids or your husband. 
you can't live in two places at once. And OP replies, well, I'll talk to my husband and we'll see if I can figure this out. It's not an all or nothing for me. I love my husband and am 100% willing to work with him on this, and I'll be talking to my attorneys to see if there is any updates on my custody agreement. Well, what is the middle ground though? You keep just saying that you two will still figure this out, but you're keeping it as vague as that. You need to be honest with yourself. Realistically, what do you want? Is it to move to where your ex is? What are you going to do if your spouse doesn't want to move though? Don't just say that you'll figure it out either. What is the compromise in this situation? And OP didn't reply to that one. But there's an update. No one really asked for this one and it wasn't asked for, but because of the number of comments and feedback that I was getting, I just felt the need to post an update. During the last month, my ex has taken the job and is in the process of moving states. He has found a place and is getting ready for the transfer. After several discussions with my husband and a huge discussion about priorities, we have both decided to move together to follow my children. This was no easy choice for the both of us, and it was a very tight decision, but we finally came to the conclusion together that we didn't want to be apart from each other, nor my children. Since my husband works remotely, he will be keeping his job for now, but is already seeking a new one in the States. I have already contacted my previous employer, and am in the talks for a job as well. We will be staying with a family relative until we find a place of our own. When we finally settle down and have a home that can house my children, I will be filing for 50-50 custody, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to get it, as this is what both I, my ex, and my husband want. I want to thank everyone who commented on my last post, even the ones that said not so nice things. I realize that owning up and fixing my mistakes are very difficult to do, but I'm slowly but surely doing it. This community is such a treasure. Thank you. And in the comments, Paper Voices says, You are very lucky to have married an understanding man to make such sacrifices for your happiness. Good luck and happy new year. And OP replies, I am very lucky and I am very happy. Thank you. And to have such a good relationship with your ex too, who also sounds like a decent guy. Whatever mistakes you've made in life, you chose well on the spouse front. Those kids are surrounded by great role models, yourself included. Best of luck with the move. When people haven't been the best parents, people always say, why don't they get their stuff together and do better? Like it's easy to do. It's a lot of work to repair relationships with your children and do better. You have done the hard work and showed to be a wonderful parent. Great job. I am so glad to see this working out. And for what it's worth, there is nothing wrong with situations where the father has primary custody for a while, or even permanently. Nobody assumes men are crappy fathers when mothers have primary care. We should extend the same courtesy to mothers. Alright guys, I think that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you need a good laugh, please do check out my second channel, Marky2, links down in the description below, or it's going to appear somewhere on the screen here at the end, little bubble with my face on it. As always, a big shout out to my Patreon and channel members, your faces are surrounding me right now and I love to have you guys with me, and down in the comments sections of each and every video, and just knowing that you're always there to support me, it's a humbling and lovely feeling. And rest assured, I do see you, and I do notice your support, and I thank you every day for being here and helping me along this journey. Not much else to say besides that, guys. Um, thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. I do hope that you have a good day, night, sleep. Whatever you're up to, I will see you in the next video, and thank you again. Bye.